Hello everybody, Princess Bear here, and we're back at Epcot for the 2022 Food and Wine Festival because we watched the princess murder some defenseless plants. Now it's time to watch Bear eat everything she can. You Bear being me. I brought snacks. I don't want her to starve, but I do want to make her laugh. Eat the plants. Don't eat the animals. We all know why you're here. And be sure to subscribe. You heard the bell. cake that's super dangerous Dave Chappelle level yellow cake just don't drop that if you don't know what I'm talking about you're probably too young to be watching this channel I, I can't I'm probably too old to be on YouTube either way well, let's go ahead and slice into this cake you guys want these desserts I would never ever at a festival of any sort Epcot otherwise order cake on my own I just would not do it Layers in there. It's a bunch of yellow cake. Tons of coconut here. Chocolate sauce on the side. Is it jam in the middle? Oh boy. I'm trying here, okay? I'm actually trying. Um, it tastes like somebody took like the mounds without the nuts. Not the, not the almond joy, the mounds, and melted on top of yellow cake. If that sounds appetizing to you, by all means go for it. As far as I'm concerned, it's a little bit too much coconut. Two out of five plus. Get back here. <laughs> I said I hate apple pies, yet somehow I convinced to try this brand new apple tart they have here in the apple seed orchard. You guys are really sleeping on apple seed orchard. You need to come in here at least for an AC break. The drinks are worth it at the very least. Let's see if the dessert is worth it. This is a, a nice crumble on top, a nice tart casing. It completely falls apart with a fork, or spork in my case. Very crumbly. That holds some of the same issues that I have with apple pie. Too cinnamony. Weird textures. The flavor is not bad, but the chewing it is a chore. Two out of five claws. Mm -hmm. So, you guys said desserts. I don't like desserts, but I'm trying them anyway. Probably heard that a thousand times by now. This one, I actually want it. A warm chocolate pudding cake from Ireland with a Bailey's Irish cream cream sauce on top. Question is, how many magic pills is this really gonna require? I'm gonna guess two and just gamble on my life, like I always do. Because you guys ask for this. And if I get sick, I'm sure the princess will film it. It's a sizable little cake. I have a little personal portion. Slice is really easy. Get a little traditional cake slice out of here. Oh, it's so cute. It's very cute. Ta -da. It looks really dense. There's no filling inside. All you have is the uh, Bailey's Irish cream on top. Uh, so, you know, in Ireland, everybody's Irish, right? Ooh. 
It is very warm. Like, fresh out of the oven warm. And like, it, uh, the cake is like so, is like gel to the mousse that it, it, the whole thing just feels like a mousse bite. There's no real cake feeling in your mouth. It just basically dissolves. There's no chewing. It's just like, taste and swallow. But I would say, as far as cakes go, from my limited dessert experience, I think, one, it's cake. And two, it actually tastes pretty good. Look at that, three and a half out of five plus. I wish I could share this. Love the little cuteness of the uh, Tangerine Cafe little kebabs. It's such a little tiny kebab, but this is lamb. Mine's is what we did for Persian New Year this year. This is the first time we were cooking lamb in the house. Mind you, I had to touch it. The princess was to touch it, but we had lamb. And I, I love the color and the char on this. A little sauce. I'm excited. Mm. Yeah. I don't know about the flavor of charred lamb. This does it. This is a spiced charred lamb, so there's a little bit of spice to it here. It's like spice covered and not necessarily spicy, but if you have issues with spice and you compare the two, I'm thinking it's maybe a two out of 10 on the spice scale, nothing that's gonna kill you, but it is packed full of the flavor. Like a flavor punch when you bite into it. I would give it a four and a half out of five plus. Then you have like a little carrot and chickpea salad with raisins in the bottom as well. Okay, now this is an acceptable salad to put raisins in. Not potato salad. Ever. Mm. The carrot and raisin go really well together. The chickpea sort of paired with it. This is a nice little dish. I would say this is fit for a World Showcase lunch, honestly. If I ordered two of these, I'd probably be good to go for the whole day. Most of them. I am a bear. Giving it still full faith, four out of five. This is really good. Right? <laughs> I knew what I you meant. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Telling you the music over here, killing it. So we got a chicken bun. You guys know how I love buns here in Japan. Oh, this reminds me of my favorite one from about oh, three festivals ago now. So I couldn't turn down the opportunity to get this. This one isn't new, but I'm hoping it's the same one that I had before, because that was a bigger test today. If so, Japan's gonna be leads ahead of every booth this year. Mmm. A nice deep chicken in there. Nice sticky sauce, sweet bun. This reminds me of my childhood. Definite five out of five claws. I really don't know what's better. The drums in Japan or the musicians at the India stage? Morocco? Kill, or Moroccan stage, mm -hmm. killing it. Killing every time. I've got RRR on the mind. If you haven't seen the movie on Netflix, you're not doing yourself any justice. That is... My second best movie of the year. The only reason it's not the first is because everything, everything, everywhere, all at once came out in theaters. Otherwise, it's my favorite movie of the year. So here we have takoyaki. This is one of my favorite things uh, that I can get other than eel. Uh, weaknesses. My list is getting long. But when I saw this offered at the booth, I ran for it. The princess had to suffer and watch me eat these countless number of times. And I'm glad that I at least get to make her suffer at home for once. Mm. 
you have any issues with texture. I would never recommend that anybody get this. If you like octopus in any way, shape, or form, it's always gonna be a recommendation for me. Five out of five claw, it's one of the better inside of left. For you deals with a uh, culture palette. Or trash pandas like me. We got the spicy salmon danberry. We got some fish roe on top. A little bit on top of a bed of rice. I don't know what I was expecting. I, for some odd reason, I was expecting like a little mini fish fillet. Instead, you have like the little cute pieces of salmon in a sauce. We'll see exactly how spicy they say this is. I like the cute little cup. No, we're not keeping it. And you get chopsticks. You have to ask for the chopsticks. You do have to ask for the chopsticks. They used to keep them out on the counter. Now they don't anymore. I don't know why, but I blame people. People are always a problem. It's basically just cubed salmon um, with the spicy mayo. That spicy, spicy shrimp sauce almost. American shrimp sauce. Yum yum sauce. Um, I wouldn't even call it yum yum sauce. It's basically just spicy mayo. It's a heavy mayo flavor with a hit of the spice. It's okay. It's nothing special. I wouldn't write home about this. The uh, the chicken bun and the takoyaki is definitely a way to go. It isn't terrible if you really want some fish. But we've definitely seen a lot better from the Japan stand. Two and a half out of five plus. It feels weird to me that the, the, the most of the seed food dishes reside in America most often. These are the ones that I end up having to eat. Now, crab cake slider. I don't usually have a whole lot of faith in the ability of any of the stands out here to handle crab or lobster or anything else, but my friend, our friend at Nerd of the Wind would never forgive me if I passed up on a chance to eat crab cake slider. He would probably make fun of me a lot, actually. So here I am. Try this for him. Mm, crispy slaw. It does remind me sort of the Earth Eats like Impossible Slider. But it's just slaw and crab cake instead. Nice char. It's some sort of tropical slaw. I'm kind of afraid, honestly. I'm, I'm hesitating right now. I'm legit stalling because I'm not sure I want to eat this. serviceable and so when I say serviceable serviceable like a serviceable like a brand new Kia it ain't pretty probably not gonna have a lot of memories in it but I get a lot of dirty looks from the princess because she used to drive one uh, the, the crab cake doesn't have like the punches like special crab like it can be a little bit well over season I taste more of the slaw than the crab cake it's just like Generic fish flesh is what I get from it. Nothing that I'm gonna like remember or brag to my friends about. Two and a half out of five plus. If you haven't listened to Ella Fitzgerald, you haven't lived life. Stop what you're doing right now and go listen to Ella Fitzgerald. I think all the big ones are here. Here we are once again in the food and wine booth, or food and wine. Boycotting the Italy booth. 
there were things that he could have had there, but he said no for me putting Italy on the list. Too expensive. It is always the most expensive booth on World Showcase, with the longest line and the least appetizing looking food. I don't know about all that. It's early it's stuff. Dessert. Ciao so I'm not convinced. You get 100 likes on this, maybe I'll go back and try one thing. Ooh. 100 though. One thing I will try and one thing only. <laughs> Where the hardest part about bring your own silverware to a festival like this is one, keeping track of it in a big camera bag. The second is cleaning it after everything that you eat because you really don't want to be eating something with seafood and then walking around with it smelling like seafood and touching your other silverware all day. Me and the princess obviously keep ours separated. She has her own bag for the vegan silverware. I have my own bag for the you know om omnivore silverware. But you should have seen her face when they went to go hand this to her. It was a, just a straight seafood salad. As, Everything she hates. One, uh, animal flesh. Two, it is filled with olives. And it's exactly what it smells like. Olives and seafood. I am actually excited for this. I was not, in the beginning, I'm like, seafood salad. In Spain? Mm. But seeing like, the layers of it, ooh, this is going to be good. I think we have like, little baby scallops, shrimp, and mussel in there. Flavor slightly chilled. Ooh, it's got like a nice like briny saltiness to it. Without that overly like fishy taste that like cold um, mussel or shrimp will. It's a nice briny bite. The olives really help sort of balance out the flavors. There's a lot. Five out of five claws going to bear necessities. If you like seafood, you know that it's odd to be eating seafood in this heat. I say do it. It's worth it. Maybe wait till at night though. Definitely recommend. So here we have the paneer, uh, like fried cheese. Think of it as basically like an Indian mozzarella stick, but it's cheap cheese instead of cow's milk. Uh, it does come with a mango ketchup. Obviously, I did not get that because I don't think any of you guys want me to die. It's a nice deep fried thick with a nice little breading. A solid cheese. It's not really uh, milky like mozzarella. Not as soft, but usually still pretty good. Let's see how this, this works out. It's good. Paneer is a staple in many like Middle Eastern and Indian dishes. And I absolutely love it. It's actually the princess that introduced me to it. Before that, I never knew it existed, but I am addicted. This could be my, my snack of the festival. It's on my Bear Sessi list. I could stand with the breading to be just a tad bit lighter. And I wish they had some other dipping sauce other than mango ketchup. 
but I still like it. Four to five balls. Who does paneer better, the festival or Sanaa? Definitely Sanaa. Does cheap cheese better than the festival? It's just too easy. I love the paneer. Now that I keep eating them, it's just too dry. Like overcooked, too dry. Which is a shame because I love the flavor. I love paneer. But I just, I just can't. Because of that, I'm dropping the rating to one and a half it out of five plus. No. Ketchup is not going to save that. All the sauce in the world is not going to make up for dried out cheese. Here we have the tiki chicken masala with a nice uh, Greek yogurt sauce on top of a bit of rice. Well, it doesn't look like a great portion size, but it gives you incredibly uh, decent and hard pieces of naan. So I'm just going to load up this naan with some of this chicky chicky masala. A little bit of sauce on there. And uh, we'll be having naan of that. Mm. I know. Obviously, that the um, the chicken is supposed to be the star of this dish. But if you had just given me the naan with the Greek yogurt and the rice, I'd have been perfectly happy. Um, chicken, it's okay. It's done the right home about. The flavors are feel a bit muted, but overall, I think it's a decent dish. I give it two and a half out of five points. So we have the taco El Pastor, you have seared pork belly on a corn tortilla with chipotle black beans, pineapple, and pickled onions. The tiny hint of chives on top. Uh, one of the cast members in that booth spoke very, very high of this barbacoa. It looks pretty messy, but it's got a very nice char and color to it, a healthy dose of pineapple. And they are not skipping on the dosage because this is a taco and you got juices and meats falling on both sides. Mm. Not since Nine Dragons have I tasted such well-cooked and well-seasoned pork belly. A lot of stuff in the taco. Lots of stuff going on, but all the flavors are complimentary. And honestly, I can eat a whole plate of these. It is messy, but honestly, it is worth every single bite. Do not miss out on this taco. Giving it five out of five plus. It's on my band of list. We have the tostada de barbacoa with barbacoa beef on a fried corn tortilla with chipotle black beans, salsa verde, Mexican crema, queso fresco, and chives. No, it looks like this taco, but it's basically a mini Mexican pizza with a bunch of toppings on top. The nice crisp tostada. And all of those things just described all matched in there. Now we would hope that one of this year this would be one of those things you can modify. But it looks like the beans and the looks like the, the beans and the meat is all like mixed together on here. So I'm not sure. Maybe they serve it all in one. Uh, but even if you were able to get it modified, it would basically just be black beans and a tostada with rodeo sauce. This is similar to modifications that we've been able to get here before. If it ends up being that we can uh, come and modify this, then maybe when we come back, if we do a second video, we'll give that a shot. Until then, let's give this uh, messy boy a try. Okay. 
Definitely got like that smoky over the grill flavor. Nice pulled. Meat on top of the side, all the flavors work, even the queso. There's an overpowering the light chive. I like it, but I think the taco is better. We were Mexican food kind of sore, and I'm not. I think even you would second guess this choice, but it's not terrible. I give it two and a half out of five plus. So the Swanky Swine decided they wanted to put pork shoulder on lettuce. Healthy, healthy pork? Maybe the pork wants to shed a few pounds? I'm not sure. But you got the shredded pork shoulder, you have a, lime, a cilantro lime crema, charred corn salsa, and some pickled onions. And then that's a little ribs. A little pork shoulder lettuce taco. And I almost dropped it. You know, the pickled onions with the salsa and the pork shoulder, that all works. And it's literally to me just like a salad you eat with your fingers. But it works, it gives you a nice, thick, juicy chunk of the pork shoulder. Well, seasoned, juicy, not dry, which is like the key point. That's pretty good. Honestly, I would eat this on the regular. Four out of five boss. Brewing has been like a consistency that was the third year of brewing here at Food Wine. Uh, it was a surprise when it first came out, but now it's a staple and I love it. I love that you get these different wing flavors, you get a nice sized portion for what you pay, and that's saying a lot of Disney. And this time I went with a jerk, a dry rub jerked wing with papaya drizzle, like a papaya chili drizzle. So I'm hoping for like a nice full flavored <laughs> bite with a little bit of heat to it. Now, the sauce they gave me is like they did drizzle it, but it's like buried at the bottom of the, the boat. Try to get down there, fight it. Like digging for pirates buried treasure in here. There we go, get a little bit. A nice helping of the chives on there. Buckle up. Mm. Okay. The dry rub is great. I mean, it's a perfect amount of jerk without going overboard to where it's like over season and the chili provides a nice heat it's not super prevalent but it doesn't get in the way of the jerk which i like here's some solid wing i've long searched around property for like the best wing honestly it seems like they just end up at food one give them that four and a half out of five plus Oh, this infamous fly fried. It's one of those like weird, what I expect to be slightly Instagrammable uh, Epcot dishes. If you're into the flight of anything, why fries is one of those things. But it's over here by Test Track. It's the weird donut box one that always has like the weird avant garde mixtures of like sweet and savory stuff. You're advertising salt and vinegar fries. This better leave like. A snail trail of salt and vinegar everywhere. Just like you see with like Glaze chips, 
That's what I expect. I want my fingers to come out looking like a mess. So far, it's just like a normal fry, which does pass the fry test at the very least. I've smelled, I've smelled people at anime conventions, the stronger vinegar smell than that. These are sad. One out of five claws. So, next up we have these barbecued bacon fries. Pig fry. Pig fry, as the princess says, with a smoked aioli on top. Now, it doesn't really look like a whole lot of aioli, and a lot of it's melted in the fry. As you know, we had to sit and take pictures of it, but there's enough in there, along with a little healthy dose of seasoning, little bacon bits. I feel like these should all come in boats and not like stand up sleeves. Just, just an observation. It does pass the fry test though. I really feel that if you told somebody in one of these Somewhat okay. I'm not going to say great American states that specialize in barbecue, North Carolina, South Carolina, Texas, Tennessee, Kentucky. They would laugh at you if you call this a barbecued fry. It's literally just a fry with bacon bits and some sauce on it. Not even a lot of sauce. And the sauce itself ain't doing any, any favors. It's, is it technically a barbecue french fry? Um, I guess. This feels like a big tease. Two and a half out of five plus. Here we have these sweet potato casserole fries with caramel pecans, toasted marshmallow cream, and caramel whiskey. Now, when you see like the first like roll of this, it's covered in that marshmallow cream, which just melted down the stalks of the fry. Uh, because of the marshmallow cream, they absolutely fell the fry test. But there's still a good bit of it on there. I think you can see a little bit of caramel in there as well. Uh, I have high hope for these fries. You add whiskey to anything, and I'm usually on board. Hmm. Mm, get a dig. Seriously? I really think this should have been a boat and not a stand up fry container. Okay. That's the flavor I think you're looking for. I can taste the caramel and the marshmallow cream. It tastes good. I wish they were a bit more crisp. The crisp part's probably my fault for them to sit so long. Someone give them a pass on that. And the flavor's there. It tastes as advertised. I have no problems with that. I don't know if I'd order the whole flight just for these. I wish I could order these by themselves. As these stand, I'm going to give these a three and a half out of five plus. I kind of want to You know, there's one thing I'm not going to turn down at Epcot. It's a nice bow. You got some pickled onions on here, carrot shallots, and that nice, pretty looking right there, little thing of beef. It's already falling apart on me, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get myself a mouthful here. Pickle flavor is strong, but it really goes well with the meat and the bao bun. This is a good snack. It's not the best one I've ever had on property. But I think it's above average. Three and a half out of five plus. We came, we saw, she was disgusted. I had snacks. I had my own snacks and we they did. were great. We did. We pre-made her snacks to hold herself over so she didn't have to suffer and not eat. So I didn't starve the princess. She had some home roasted chickpea snacks. Comment and tell us if you would like us to share the recipe of the chickpea snacks. But if there's anything else that the bear did not eat, that being me, of course there's some things that I missed. We'll be back, we'll be in, back August. in August, so leave us what you'd like me to
to eat then. If there's anything you think that we missed, of course, that's going to be a place to find us. Hit that notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. Woo! We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if you don't comment, Spaceship Birth, I don't know. It's just going to cease to exist. You heard the girl. Bonita Grand Thunder Fogarty in Makiapi. Kaya Yahi Makakiapi. Chante Washte Yuha Chi Yujapi. Hello, my name is Juanita Growing Thunder Fogarty. I am a Cinnaboy Sioux from the Fort Peck Reservation in Montana. We consider ourselves a horse culture because horses enabled our ancestors to travel the Great Plains. We honor our horses in the same way we honor our leaders by making finely beaded headdresses for them. Bead and quill work have been in my family for generations. It is a living spiritual art. We create to honor our ancestors and the natural world. Each cradleboard, doll, item of clothing, or headdress conveys our identity and homeland. Stories of the star people, the mountains, lakes, and skies are retold in the borders of buffalo robes, teepee covers, and winter town hides. As we bead, we pray, sing and tell stories so that each work is filled with gratitude, honor, and sometimes loss. My creations are inspired by dreams, by stories told at family gatherings, or stories shared as we be together around the table. Our lifestyle has prevailed over the centuries, and now it is my duty and my blessing to carry on this beautiful legacy.